and Sal Andorra. Puck Pierce is quick on the panels, but Martina Berta on the number nine with the national champions jersey of Italy first through the puddles. Evie Richards is right alongside her, as is Anna Turkstra. Everything ran well here in the start. Clean start from everyone away safely up this climb to begin with. It goes up immediately. Straight away, the heart rates rocket. Just a bit of RG Bargy on the left hand side will attract there, but it's Martina Berta who five, leads them up the climb. Five laps for these riders, no start lap, uh, just five full complete laps. Yeah, big lap here in Andorra as well, four kilometers in length, but it's Richards who's doing the digging in the wake of Martina Berta here at the front of this one. Yeah, the positions are important as always. Uh, they are here at the, the top of the first climb. It goes down with two double uh, lines so they yeah. can choose. And another climb will follow up immediately. There's your land F buried in the pack somewhat. Actually, there's no clay here. The, 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 even if the course is bad and slippery, it's not, not uh, like clay. It's oh, 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 oh. oh but Puck Peterson is just off the bike, and look at the ripple effect it's causing behind her. Yes. Evie Richards cost, held up by that. Other turks are off and running. It cost her some seconds, and you see, yeah, if the riders are behind her. Great yeah. riding from the Juan Lecomte there. Just elbowed her way through, stayed on the bike. Kate Courtney's been off as well. the well. Also with the long sleeve jersey, but more riders are. Martina Berta, she's leading the Italian champion in this long little trial. descent, but it's very slippery as you can see here. Little trials turn into that, and it is steep through here. Pauline Ferran Bravo on that hard-tailed bike. Hardtail, a bit of an unusual choice given the lack of traction out there. Yeah, but you won world champs so on a hardtail bike well, too. Well, yeah, so. I guess it works for her. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And riders have to, to ride the same bike in cross country and short, uh, short track. So short track on Friday and cross country uh, for the Sunday race. And Pauline, uh, she was what? on her hardtail bike last Friday, and uh, so she has to ride this bike uh, today again. But she feels really comfortable on it, especially when uh, the rain still comes uh, Paul, down. And Pauline Ferran Bravo, sorry to interrupt you, Bart, has gone past Berta, and she is not looking back. This is ominous now. Pauline Ferran Bravo. Only on one climb. On one Impressive. climb. Has blown Martina Berta away here at the front of this bike race. Pauline Ferran Bravo leads him on lap one. And also this uh, descent here, uh, it brings the riders back uh, uh, into the first uh, tech feed zone. It's uh, very slippery, we, we, I remember that from uh, some years ago, when we had rain here in uh, Val Mort as well. Yeah, riders I can still see each other here on a climb like this. But uh, yeah, the gap, it's getting a little bit bigger. It's Keller though, who's coming through, she's past Richards and she's just moving to her right to pass Berta now. So Alessandra Keller, buoyed by that short track win, fancies having to go at the cross country Olympic distance. There's yeah, Mona Mitterwalder in she's the white jersey. The back. And also Pick Peterson with the number one on her bike. The rain really coming down here in the Pyrenees now. Pick Peterson in the fifth place. Storms have moved around this place for the last three days, really, it seems like. And the track has done its best to absorb as much of the liquid as it could, but... And there's plenty of time, it's also important. Keller's oh. gone past her. Alessandra Keller to the front of the race then here. And Pal Aaron Salandora, and she goes past Pauline Ferran Bravo after an incredible ride back across the gap. She hits the pump track first, doubles into the burn, turns right. She was feeling strong, otherwise she wouldn't do that. Nope. I thought you were right. I thought we were going to see her just sit in behind Pauline Ferran Bravo, yeah. because let's face it, if you're going to follow anyone, a double UCI world champion is somebody to follow, but Keller feeling good today. Immediately overtook her. Uh, we saw that. Where was we saw that? Val de Sole Trentino. We saw yeah. a bit of that going on. Actually, back in the days, we had uh, eyewear uh, you zones. You told me about this, yeah. yeah. Why not again? I'd just be into that throughout the day for myself on foot, never mind the bike, but. There is Mona Mitterwaller chasing down the Paul, leading two, so she's basically with them now. Paul Very close. Struggling with the pace of uh, Alessandra Keller at the moment. Yeah, I called into the, the small gap. I called into the Cannondale factory racing pits earlier on, just before the race, and they said they'd gone to uh, a softer compound front tire on Mona Mitterwaller's bike, but the, the normal faster rolling rear. I guess that's just to give her a bit more confidence in the corners and over the roots. Yeah, especially a softer compound gives you more grip on the rocks. Well, and there the is the gap. Alessandra Keller just getting a bit of information from the team bib there. 
what sort of, will that be the gap? Will she be managing who's behind her? Will she be thinking of that or just the timing? Yeah, these, these things, uh, yeah. Mettervalner past Pauline Ferran Prevost. Sorry to interrupt you, Barbara. Mona Mettervalner up to 179 beats per minute has moved herself into second place and she's going. Yeah, she's going fast. Oh, panic stations for Pauline there. We were sort of beginning to think at the end of lap one that it might be the same. Yeah. Uh... Oh, Keller just gets bucked off the line in that rock garden and that will allow Mona Mettervalner to catch her. And that's what she does. Perfectly. Just needs to keep it calm here, Mettervalner. Exit the woods with some good speed. Pauline Ferran Provolo looking like she's being dropped by these two. Yeah, these little mistakes are easily made. Just the slightest of bobble you, bobbles you saw. Just watch this, Bart. Talk us through this bit. Yeah, you see how slippy the roots are, how slippy the rocks are, and her, her front wheel slides over that root array. And then she lost her momentum, her grip. It's a tricky sprint finish, isn't it, as well? It's short it's now, uphill actually. Uphill as well, yeah, upstart Uphill finish. as well, but uh, yeah, in short track, uh, you, had, you could carry on a lot of speed to the finish line, but now you have to, that little bridge in front of the finish, and then it's just a very short part to the finish line. So different from the short track. A sunny day or a cold and rainy day, like <laughs> it is today. But um, of course, it feels so good if you have done uh, such a high effort. There now goes Mona Mettervalner, Mona Mettervalner motors past Alessandra Keller in the lead then at the end of lap four. Yeah, this part, it goes up for such a long time. And Mettervalner's looking bridge. strong here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just bobbling slightly over to the right-hand side there, but look for all the world like she was about to try and gap Keller. But even now here, the bridge is done, and then we, we call it like the island here. This is because there's like uh, an asphalt ring, uh, like a roundabout around it. Um, and th this climb yeah, keeps on going. It's not that steep, but it keeps on going, going all the time. And here we go over the, the main roads with the new... There build. is the gap then, Mona Mettervalner out onto the final lap, leading on the hunt for her first elite level UCI Mountain Bike World Cup win, looking good at the front, the Austrian. She's looking strong out of the saddle, pushing hard here on the first climb of the last lap. And how difficult bar is it to keep cool now? Just tick off all the sections one by one. Yeah, keep cool, but also yeah, it gives her a lot of morale uh, leading the race here. She can take it a bit more precisely, more carefully in the descents, the slippery descents, and that's definitely what she will do. She wouldn't take too many risks. There's, there's a little bit of time to play with. And the she's two from the World Championships uh, two weeks ago. Luana Lecomte behind her. And behind her then, Evie Richards. So that group, they're still somewhat together. They're strung out a bit. Well, a little bit of a, a slide from Martina Berta in the back. Yep. Her rear wheel slides away in that Drif last corner. Drifting her way on to the start finish. Straight, Martina Berta. There is Pauline Ferran Bravo. Yeah, and also riders say, yeah, uh, are looking for sometimes a new motivation or preparation. And oh, oh, whoa, whoa, yeah, Mona yeah, yeah, yeah. Valor just on clips and gets a little bobble. And that is how quickly a lead can slip away. Can Keller capitalize on that mistake that cost her much time? She's got the bike moving again now. It's not over yet. <laughs> the it's race. not <laughs> over yet. One mistake and this race could turn on its head. Shows how difficult it is. Safely navigates that bridge for the last time. Here she is, is second Keller. Second place. She's not that far off. No, what is the clock going to say? Yeah, leaves it all between the tapes. Alessandra Keller. Was three and four. Yeah, I wonder if Lecomte can uh, just yeah. put a move on Pauline ferran Bravo here towards that's the latter stages of this race and move herself up into third. She's catching her compatriot. Yeah, that's still possible. There she is. But meanwhile, at the finish line, Mona Mittervaller takes her first ever elite level UCI World Cup win in Pal Sal Andorra. Mona Mittervaller wins in Andorra. And the exhaustion and the emotion pours out of the Austrian. And this is the woman she beat today, Alessandra Keller, celebrates a truly, truly gutsy performance. Even has the wherewithal to get the sponsor's logos out <laughs> for the camera.
a clean jersey. Yeah, clean. Maybe that was her plan all along. Yeah, with the Chile. Great performance. Yeah, superbly tough, tough, tough performance. Oh, so much emotions. Mona Meta Valner. The world champion, Pauline Ferran Bravo, is still in third place. Pauline Ferran Bravo has managed to see off the advances of Luana Lecomte late in the day here. Pauline Ferran Bravo out of the saddle. She did so much work early on, maybe worked a little too hard, crosses the line. Third place today, Lou, and plenty of points. Luana Lecomte is fourth, and behind her, Evie Richards. These top five, Bart, have been the class of the field really this season. Yeah, not that much in between these riders. At the no. number three, four, and five, you see only a few seconds. So it's Mitter Valner from Keller for Ampravu. Luana Lecomte was fourth, Evie Richards was fifth. Martina Berra, then the series leader, Puck Peterson, Anna Terpstra, Sevilla Blanc, and Kate Courtney rounds out the top ten. And Jenny Risvidge, Rebecca Henderson, Yolanda Neff, Nicole Kohler, Gwendolyn Gibson, Caroline Boy, Lyra Steger, Anna Tauber, and Linda Indergrand in 19th. 20th went to Malena Degen, Yannicka Loiv, Hyberlin, Forcini, Benz, Lille, Jackson Giroux, and Zena Fry was 28th. Mona Mitterwalner, here's the announcement she's been waiting for since the start of the season. What a result for the young Austrian. Mona Mitterwalner wins in Palar and Sala Andorra. The only rider on that podium not visibly feeling the cold is the rider that checked out with the win as the rain starts again here in Andorra. A wet elite men's race beckons, but a new entry into the history books is made. Mona Mitterwalder from Austria is a UCI World Cup winner at elite level at last. For the overall, Puck Peterson still leads the way ahead of Pauline ferran -Pravo. Alessandra Keller in third, Mona Mitterwalner in fourth, Luana Lecomte in fifth. So 269 points of difference between Pauline ferran -Bravo and Puck Peterson. Close that margin slightly today. Mitterwalner fourth, Evie Richards in eighth, just ahead of Martina Berta in ninth, and Jenny Risvis in tenth.